Hi everybody and welcome to a quick tutorial looking at creating some basic objects for your game using ProBuilder. In this case we'll create some barrels like this and some crates, something that every game needs at some point. And hopefully the lessons in this can lead to um, helping you create more advanced things as well. So starting out uh, we'll work on the barrel first. This is really just a cylinder with a bit of extra detail added. So I'm going to hit Control shift k on the keyboard, oops that came up pretty close, uh, to create a new shape. You can also just click on the New Shape tool on the toolbar if you prefer to do that. I like keyboard shortcuts. And we'll choose Cylinder here in the Shape Selector options. And I'll move this uh, turn back on Snaps if you're using ProGrid. I'm just going to move it down to the ground so I can visualize it a bit better. Uh, I've already got my settings uh, here from creating previous barrels. I found about 0.35 for a radius, 16 sides. Um, I can knock that down if it's a, a lower poly game to something like 8. Um, and we'll smooth it later, so you'll see how that works. Um, but I found about 16 works pretty well. It's a good balance between uh, looking good and performing well. Uh, height, 1 meter, and 0 height segments. We'll add those segments in later. So once you have that ready, however you like, click on Build, and then you can close the Shape tool. The first thing that we'll want to do is not actually any geometry editing. Before we add any more detail, we want to get the UVs set up before that becomes more of a pain later on. So I'm going to open up the UV Editor tool and move into face mode. And I'll select really any face, it doesn't actually matter. And then by holding control and clicking on adjacent faces, I'm going to auto stitch together. Looking at the UV Editor here, if I turn off the display, the texture display, you'll be able to watch a little more easily. Each time I click, it's just automatically stitching on that face. So real quickly, I can walk around here get a nice perfect unwrap with zero distortion in very little time. So there we go. There's our unwrap, all the faces there. Uh, for the tops, we don't need to do anything with these yet um, because they're not going to change, but what I like to do in some cases, uh, you can select them and hit Alt-G to grow the selection out to, to grab all of those. I'm actually going to merge these all down into one face and this is really just hiding the triangles. You can always re-triangulate it later if you'd like. Um, it's just going to make things a little cleaner looking uh, for the future. You can always go back on that. So we have that set. Now we're actually going to go in and add the geometry detail. To start, I'm going to select just one of the edges on the side. Um, and you know what? First, actually, we also need to add the smoothing. So right now, obviously, it's got this, uh, these facets. As I look around, you can see, I'll turn off lighting, it'll be more obvious maybe. Not about the same. So these edges are clearly defined, uh, or the faces, versus if you look at the barrels here, you really can't tell where those are. And this is a big help, especially if you're using, um, actually I'm gonna also show you this, hope you don't mind a little bit of a detour. Let's create another cylinder and give it only eight sides and build that out. So this is really just about the same. Um, let's just keep all things equal and go through and do the same quick auto stitch on this. This is probably something we could enable as a default, come to think of it, for the cylinder. Keep that in mind. Okay, so now these two are exactly the same. Obviously the faces on this are quite a bit larger. We have fewer subdivisions or uh, cuts on the side, but we can make them each look pretty good. And we do that by selecting all the faces on the side. And again, I'm just selecting one, and I hit Alt-G to grow the selection outward. Um, if yours isn't doing exactly that, you can find the, uh, the Grow Selection button in your toolbar. And see, it has that little gear icon above it. That means it has some extra options. Hold Alt and click on it. Or if you're using the text mode, click the, the plus button next to it. And you have the option for restrict to angle. You want to make sure this is on. And generally, I find about 60 degrees, anywhere up to um, 89 really is, is great. And this is just the maximum angle that it's going to keep growing uh, the selection around. Uh, if you experiment with that, it'll make pretty good sense. Optionally, you can turn off restrict to angle, and then it's just going to grow outward to any adjacent faces. Anyway, restrict angle, about 60 to 70 generally works really well. Moving forward, we have those selected now. I can click on a single smoothing group to smooth them all as one. And now, as you can see, it sees our, the, the game engine, or I'm not sure exactly the technical bits of that. Um, 
but it's it's smoothing it out. It looks smooth, even though, of course, those are individual faces. And we can do the same thing over here. So I'll grab this face, Alt-G to grab them all, and open up the Smoothing Groups tool. Click on a single Smoothing Group, and there we go. Even with just eight faces, it's generally the same. Obviously, not quite as good from the side, of course, you really can't tell all that well. It's just the bottom and the top, of course, are really going to show exactly uh, what the what the real geometry is. So depending on what you're doing, uh, you can get away with more or less polys. Um, we should get back to actually creating these barrels. So I'll delete this one. We don't really need it. I'm going to be working with this one for this tutorial. Uh, moving back into adding the detail. Select one of the edges on the side and hit Alt-U on your keyboard to insert an edge loop. You can also click on the Insert Edge Loop button in the toolbar, of course. And then I'm going to scale that edge loop up just a bit, just kind of building out whatever the center of that barrel is going to be. And then I'll select these two, the two new edges there. And again, hit Alt-U to insert a new loop. And also scale that one up just about... That looks perfect, actually. Don't think I need to change that. Um, and you could keep going, adding more and more loops around to really smooth it out. But I think this number is just about perfect. I found it. It looks good. Uh, that's the same that these barrels have. So it looks good, but you can't really tell that it has um, only this many subdivisions or, or loops. So that's great. Let's move ahead to making this actually look uh, like a barrel with the texture. So I already have this barrel texture, which is in my material editor. I have two actually, the regular barrel and barrel old. I'm going to apply um, oh, apply the other one just to make it look a bit different. So I can click on the apply button. As the, um, the button here notes, it says Alt-6. You could hit Alt-6 on your keyboard and I can use that shortcut to apply any number of materials depending on whichever is set. So that's a, a handy shortcut if you need it. And it comes in, of course, looking totally wrong. That's all right. The next part is fixing that up. So let's open up the UV editor, and we'll do a bit of manual editing on these UVs. And this is a good point to note that these textures are all provided, the ones I'm using here, the uh, barrel and the crate and the ground are all provided by GameTextures.com. They are awesome textures. You could make your own if you like, um, but these are definitely a great place to start um, learning how pros do uh, this work themselves or just pick them up and, and get moving on your game yourself. So anyway, doing the actual work here, um, once again I'm going to grab, hit Alt-G, grab all the faces that are on the side. So it's all around the side, none of the top or the bottom. And I can see them all selected here in the UV editor. And if I move them around, you can see it moving around. Uh, if you hold Shift and then use the right mouse button, or to move it uh, more simply, starting from the base, um, we have the pivot of this UV group here. If I use the right mouse button, I can move that pivot, so I'll be able to rotate or scale around that point. And holding Shift will snap to vertex points, and Control will snap to the actual grid. So I'm going to hold Shift so that it snaps to the corner down here. And then I'm going to hold Control while moving that to snap that corner right into the corner of the, um, of the texture or the UV space. And if I move this out, you can see why a bit better, maybe. Uh, this is... Let's make this bigger, sorry. So this area, obviously on the bottom, the bottom half, is the side for the barrel, and then we have these two areas for the top and the bottom. So we want to get this matching exactly to that side area in the texture. And this would be maybe a little different if you've made your own, maybe the same if you do it the same way. Uh, this is definitely a good way to do it. So then I'll swap into scale mode, and I'm just going to scale this down until the top lines up. Looks like right about there. I'm not going to get too perfect since we're just kind of tutorialing it here. And it looks right on, actually. So you'll notice that I've let these go off the side. And what's going to happen is those will tile around and essentially end up back here. It wraps around, uh, almost like there's a portal on the other side. Um, and UVs will do that. That's just fine. Uh, this isn't a light map or anything where it needs perfect one-to-one uh, -one space. Um, and it's just a side. It's just going to wrap around, as you'd imagine, and look just fine. So that's good. That part was quick and easy. So lastly, we need to take the top and the bottom and make them fit 
these areas. So I'll drag select actually, so I can get both of those at once. Oops, drag select uh, has to cover it all, but they're already on top of there. Um, or they're, they're overlapping the other bits. So that's fine. I can also select in the editor, or in the, the scene view here. And it translates over to the UV window. So with those selected, I'm going to move it up, try to sort of center it on on, on the, uh, the top area here, and then scale it to just about right. Again, I'm not worrying about being too perfect right now. And there, that looks good. And I'll take whichever one I grab here and move it over. It looks like that was the top. I could keep them both on the same spot. Uh, in fact, this might be somewhere that this texture could be improved, actually. Um, if I were making it, I would probably have just one area for or to be used on the top and the bottom. And I'd use this extra space over here for, um, I don't know, a decal area or uh, something, maybe a, a different top version, like you could have an open and enclosed version. Um, and you'd, you'd move your, your face onto either one, depending. So that's something you could do if you're making your own texture, or again, purchase these awesome textures from gametextures.com and then customize it up yourself. Put like a, a tap on this one, or a crack, or maybe the maker's mark, or something like that. Um, who knows? So, you can close the UV editor, and we've got this done. There's our beautiful looking barrel, ready to go right into your game. Worth mentioning here that, of course, this is just a totally regular mesh. You can animate it, you can use physics on it, it can be anything you like. Uh, ProBuilder isn't making any funky proprietary mesh types or anything like that. Uh, it's just the same as an imported mesh, absolutely zero difference once it's in your game. So I'll move that out of the way, and we'll take a look at these crates. So these are obviously just a simple cube with, again, a really nice texture on it. I uh, just want to point out with these, uh, these nice height maps that uh, Game Textures provides, if I look at the side of the crate, this line here, as I move around, even though there's not actually any extra geometry there, you actually see different sides as, this, uh, as if there is. So this is really, really nice, uh, a way to cheat, which is always the best thing to do if you can in a game, um, or when making them, so you can get better performance and not have to do as much work, or not do unnecessary work. Uh, there's always plenty you'll have to do uh, to create it. Anyway, let's create uh, something like this. So I'm going to hit Control-K and spawn in just a totally standard cube, nothing special. Uh, then I'll apply that create texture to it. So here... Looks like I could just hit Alt-9 if I wanted to, but we'll use the button. So I've got the crate texture. It's obviously set up to be used uh, in case you want just a square crate, this bottom section, or anything that's rectangular. Um, pretty simple to set up if it's square. Let's open up that UV editor again. And we want to fit this face down into this area. And I could actually do this just using the auto tools if I'd like. So if I hold control while scaling, it's going to snap to the grid. And I think I want that. And then I'm going to again hold control and move this and snap it down there. So that's one side. I could keep working on that, or I could just select this face, hold control shift, and then click on each other face. And control shift with auto mode is going to just copy paste the UV settings from one face to another. So I have this face selected with the UV settings that I want, and I control shift or hold control shift and click on this other, and there it is, applied. Let's do the bottom as well. And there's our crate, all set. So this is using auto UVs, which means that unlike the barrel, if I start pulling this, now uh, they're uh, held over there, so let's move it in this way you'll notice that it's automatically um, updating those UVs. And this may or may not be what you want. It probably isn't actually with something like a crate. If this were a brick wall, yeah, you probably would, but here we don't. So let's actually convert this to auto UVs. Or, sorry, to manual UVs. Um, so these selected, I'll drag select actually to make sure I get all the faces on the object. Or I could just select one and double click to select all of them and click on Convert to Manual. 
Now these are manual UVs, so basically they are set and they're going to stick. So now as I pull this, you see they stay. They're not changing at all. And this works pretty well, but we can make it better by using that extra um, up at the top of this texture. Oops, got to zoom in here. There's obviously a much better section at the top that won't be stretched and skewed and will look a little, uh, actually a lot better if we use that area. So I'm going to grab that face. Actually, I'll grab all these longer faces. And again, holding control, so I'm still snapping. I'm going to move them up here. Then I'm going to hold shift and right click to move and snap the pivot down to this corner or this vert here. Moving back to scale mode, I'm just going to hold control and scale this out just on that axis and fit it on that. And there we go. Looks a lot better. Real simple to do. And a lot of it because, again, these uh, game textures, EVs are already set up really nicely. Uh, they're just making life a lot easier, really. Um, than, uh, than a lot of others that I've seen. And they're a great way to, to take a look and learn how to do it yourself as well. Uh, once again, there's this extra space over here in the corner that maybe you could do something different with. Otherwise, we could always move any of these over onto it so we have a, a, different, a different look if we want. And that's all there really is to it. Um, just like that, you've got some pretty great looking assets to go into your game. They're real nice and efficient, of course, because they're very few polys. Um, or at least that's that's one side of being efficient anyway. Um, not much work at all to it. And then once once again, just to really um, make sure it's clear, uh, we get a lot of questions on this. It's just a regular mesh. You can do anything you want with this, uh, including export to OBJ. If you get it pretty good here, export it, bring it into Blender or ZBrush or anything else that you like to really get detailed on. So thanks for taking a look. I hope this helps people get started with creating objects and doing some of the more advanced UV editing as well. Um, and we hope to see you in future tutorials. We'll look into more, uh, more advanced editing and building uh, as well as the UV features. So thanks for watching. See you there.